Look at the value ladder. What is what is a value ladder? The value ladder is the series of steps which which where you try to help prospects to get to know you, so that they build trust in you, they get to know you, they get to like you, they get a sense of who you are and what you're about. In many ways, putting on a seminar is a fantastic way of helping people to come into your world to build your so when somebody goes to your seminar as a financial advisor they get to sit there they get to they decide do i like you do you sound like you know what you're talking about are you an expert that's a great way to bring people into your world so the value letter is a really important concept so the purpose of a value letter is to make it easier to start conversations with people and build relationships with prospects and clients and lots of different businesses in other professions, they use this value ladder approach. So let me give you some examples. What about the value ladder for a dentist? The real money for dentists is in cosmetic surgery. But cosmetic surgery is, you know, cosmetic dental surgery is really expensive. My father uh, was a dental surgeon and he always told me the money is not in cleaning people's teeth, it's not in doing fillings, it's not in taking people's teeth out. The real money is in the high-end quality services like cosmetic works. So what a lot of dentists do today is create a value ladder like this. They just want to get you in the building so that they can so that you can experience their expertise. So a lot of dentists now will offer free teeth cleaning. Some of them will even offer free teeth whitening. You know, teeth whitening used to be really expensive. Teeth whitening used to be at the top of the list, but now, you know, most dentists will do teeth whitening. So they offer these things for free in a lot of cases, and they, they do that just to get you in so that you can get to know them. They ask you for a testimonial. So it becomes much more likely that you will stay with that dentist and want to go on to some of the more high-end, high-value services that they offer. What about a chiropractor? Again, a lot of chiropractors, they use the value ladder approach so they just want to get you in maybe a free massage something like that a free consultation but what they really want you to do is to spend a lot of money and go on their wellness retreat at a high-end glossy hotel uh, where they maybe do some yoga and we have some lovely food and we maybe have some uh, speakers come in that's where the real money is for the chiropractor the real money is not down the bottom with the massaging and, and, and that sort of thing as well. So have a think about what sort of value ladder could you offer as a financial advisor that brings people into your world? What about the value ladder for a gym? It's pretty similar, isn't it? Uh, they just wanna get you into the premises, offer some a free membership, maybe for a couple of weeks. They want you to experience it. They want you to get to know it because what they really want you to do is to pay for personal coaching or something like that, the high end, the high value stuff. So let me show you my value ladder for financial advisors when financial advisors come into my world. At the top is my weekend retreat where we go off for three days, a deep dive in a really nice hotel, deep dive, marketing in depth weekend. Now that's very, very expensive. But if I only advertise that on my website, financial advisors will come along. If a financial advisor has not heard of me, they say, well, Phil's offering this weekend retreat, but my goodness, that's expensive, but I don't know anything else about Phil. Is he any good? Does he know what he's talking about? So what I do is I offer some things further down. So I've got a free Facebook group for financial advisors. I've got a scorecard, which uh, I'll show you my scorecard later. I'll offer a free ebook. Um, so the things in green at the bottom, they are free. They are high value, but they are free. So I give them away to people. The things in blue, sometimes I give them away. Sometimes I charge for them. The things in black, I always charge for. And the things in red are my top end, high end value, very expensive products. But I need to offer these free products and these cheaper products first so that people can get to know me and get a sense of what I do and what I'm about. So what about the value ladder for a financial advisor? Well, it could be a variety of different things. You could 
adopt the same approach. You could offer some free downloads, a tips book. You could have your own scorecard. And as I said, I'll explain what a scorecard is as well. You could have an audio book. You could have a podcast. You could have videos, maybe an online challenge. Some of these things will be free. Some of these things you charge for. But right at the top, you could perhaps also offer an overseas or a, um, a weekend retreat, something that is quite expensive for your really high end, high value clients. But so that people want to go on these things, they need to experience your expertise in bite sized smaller chunks along the way. So typically, I mean, you don't need to do all of those things on that particular page, but just some of them, maybe, maybe offer a scorecard maybe offer an e-guide, a tip sheet, a PDF, maybe have a podcast, maybe do a seminar, so that it gradually builds up right to the top. So we are building a ladder of value that your prospects can experience. Okay, let me give you an example um, of a value ladder and let's move on to the next one of educating people. Um, this gentleman here, his name is Martin Bamford. He's a one of the UK's top financial planners. And he's written three books. Now, there is nothing in those three books that none of you watching this today don't know yourself. It's normal, ordinary, personal finance education, but he's put it in the form of a book. So instead of putting blogs out all over the internet, he's decided I'm going to put my expertise into a book. And so he gives away these books to his prospects. So that's a really nice gift. I think giving a prospect your own book, I mean, that's the best business card, the best name card uh, that you could ever possibly uh, give away. So that's how Martin educates his prospects. He's also got a podcast as well, which he puts out every single week. So educating your prospects putting high value content in front of your prospects is the proof that they need of your expertise. Now, not everybody is ready to write a book, but this is just one example of uh, educating prospects that works. Um, here's another financial. Her name is Catherine Morgan. She uses Facebook quite a lot. And one of the things she does as part of her value ladder and also to educate people is what she calls um, a challenge. So she will put on a five day free challenge. And you can see here it says the free challenge will help you to identify what kind of relationship you have with money, unlock self-limiting beliefs that are holding you back, give you 100 percent confidence and control with your money. Um, and so on. So she does these five day challenges. They're free for people to sign up. People get to see her. She does a Facebook live or she does a Zoom like we're doing today. But people absolutely love them because she is sharing some of her expertise in a friendly way, but also in a way that educates people and that proves that she has financial planning expertise. Possibly the most famous financial planner in the UK who does this is this gentleman here. His name is Pete Matthew um, and he's in the extreme southwest of the UK and uh, he has his own YouTube channel and he has his own podcast um, and you can see some of the uh, podcast episodes here and he puts this out week after. He's been doing this for over 10 years now and he is getting millions and millions of downloads. Now he's not giving financial advice He's just doing personal finance education, nothing more than that. And so people sign up for his podcast, they sign up for his YouTube channel. And Pete tells me, Phil, I'm getting millions of downloads, but I'm also getting very, very high quality inquiries. He says the right prospects get in touch with him, the right prospects contact him and say, Pete, I've been enjoying, enjoying your podcast. Uh, how can we work together where you are my financial planner? So uh, three examples there of, of education. I think the ultimate example of client and prospect education is seminars. Now, as I said, we can't put on seminars right now, but we can put on webinars and webinars are really, really powerful. The great thing about seminars is that someone can sit there in the room nice and quietly. They get to know you just by listening to you. They decide whether or not they like you. 
they experience your expertise right in front of their eyes. There's also this human connection. I mean, we all know this, don't we? One of the big things about the pandemic has been the loss of human connection, the ability to better meet up with people, to socialize, to get together in, in communities. And the great thing about a seminar is it brings people together. So when we're all allowed to do seminars again, please, please include, include that as well. The best sort of what to talk about in your seminars, well, selling products is, is, is possibly not a good idea. What people like to hear is case studies. They like to hear stories. They like to hear examples of how you have helped other people because then they can recognize themselves in those stories as well. And trust me on this, when you put on seminars and you follow the right sort of model here, you get very, very high conversion rates. I know one financial advisor in the UK, he has about 50 people turn up to his seminar and he says about 40 of them want to work with him personally afterwards. Um, I mean, I could, I would love to do another session all about seminars for you. If, if that's a topic that's of interest, seminars and webinars is a whole nother topic. And I would love to come back and talk to you again about doing that. But just for today, education through seminars, education through webinars is really, really powerful. We've talked about referrals and introductions. As I mentioned, it's not quite good enough just to sit back and expect referrals and introductions to come through. It is something you have to work at. Um, and you do need to have a process. You do need to teach clients what to say and how to refer you, okay? Another good thing is to build what's called the dream team, is to get together with who are the people who absolutely love you? Uh, who are the people who would fall over themselves to help you if they possibly could? It's worth putting a list of these people together. Some of them will be clients. Some of them might be relatives of yours. Some of them will just be friends in your local community. But if you can come up with a list of people who will do anything for you, these are your dream referrers and you should teach them how to refer you as well. Also, professional introducers. Most financial advisors around the world tell me that they get some uh, recommendations and some inquiries from perhaps accountants, perhaps some lawyers, uh, perhaps some other businesses as well. One of the way to build relationships with professional introducers is to train them, teach them stuff, put on your own webinars, put on your own seminars just for them, teach them a skill, teach them what financial planners do, teach them what exams and qualifications you have to achieve. Because I think a lot of professional introducers, a lot of accountants, a lot of lawyers, they think they know what financial planners do, but they don't actually know what financial planners do. So train them, add value to them, teach them, really build those relationships so that they want to pass inquiries on to you. Okay. <laughs>